so I'm so happy to be here. Um, thank you for uh, for letting me talk about this uh, about this topic. Now, first of all, uh, talking about the origin of backstage, uh, I could probably fill about two to three hours um, with that. <laughs> Um, so let's not do it, and I will give a very uh, summarized version uh, of the history of uh, Backstage. I'm meanwhile trying to share my screen, which is probably working. Yes, there we go. Awesome. So let me restart my timer, uh, because I like to talk a lot, uh, and I'm going to go through it quite fast. So um, today I'm going to talk about the real artist uh, in Backstage, and that is Inner Source. Um, both uh, backstage was created out of an inner source um, uh, effort, uh, but uh, yeah, when we were building it, we also noticed that um, it can also be a, a massive, uh, a massive win for driving inner source with uh, within uh, our engineering organization. So I'm gonna not dwell too much on it. Um, so modern day life as a developer is quite hard. Um, it is not not an easy job today. Um, I started in the industry many, many years ago when there were still a few programming, programming languages that we were using. Uh, we didn't have that much frameworks or, or options to work with. Um, those were most, mostly large uh, monoliths. Um, and well, if we, we talked about scale, we were talking uh, not about what we're talking about today, global scale. So, you know, it, life has changed a lot. And Spotify went through also through a whole journey there. Uh, from a monolith application to microservices to uh, getting into a hyper growth, uh, which is a very interesting thing, um, and trying to cope with all that and still shipping a product which, uh, which our customers uh, uh, actually, uh, actually love. So let's look at today. Uh, technology is very, very much advanced, but the problems we are trying to solve are getting much more complex, much harder. Um, the solutions you, you develop, you need more people um, with different knowledge domains. Um, writing an application nowadays, you need uh, data pipelines, you need a train and build an ML model, uh, you need to build backend microservices, and you need to connect all those things together across multiple clouds, work for multiple consumer devices, uh, and the tooling that is there to, well, help us. Um, that is also adding a lot of confusion because you need to learn all those tools and you need to be able to adopt all those tools in your organization. So we had that problem as well. And one of the things that uh, we were thinking was, let's build a portal for that. So we uh, put together a team uh, of, uh, of uh, very uh, uh, good and smart engineers and they worked together and built, uh, built us a portal uh, from, uh, from scratch. And that portal was there to um, aggregate the, uh, some of the information that we had. Uh, for instance, um, uh, yeah, what we're struggling with was finding the documentation or what team owned uh, which microservice or how did stuff in our um, engineering uh, backend or infrastructure landscape, basically anything. How does it connect to each other? You know, how, can, how can we collaborate? So um, we built a portal with that one team um, it was a monolith application. It had a fancy name. It was System Z. Um, the thing I read, a stack line was System Z, stands for everything. So that was a bit of the goal to put everything together there. Um, but yeah, uh, we had some learnings from that. So monoliths actually make collaboration quite hard. Um, developers might need more than the functionality that you are thinking about. Um, if you cannot Put in the things that really help developers move forward. Um, yeah, you, you, you need to. You, you, you are causing uh, frustration. You are causing uh, people to slow down. You are uh, uh, actually introducing blockers. And what do developers do? Well, basically anyone in engineering, you go around it because you solve stuff. That that's your work. You know, it's not only writing code. It's it's in general solving problems. So. Fragmentation uh, is introduced. Um, one of the learnings, to summarize it, is to treat uh, our developers uh, more as a, as a customer. But how to go about that? And this, by the way, is uh, Bowie, our mascot uh, in Line in the Fire, yeah, with the old portal. Um, so we figured, let's go back and uh, treat our developers as customers. We, we are good with customers, you know, we, we know how to understand what they need, 
um, we're very successful in that, so why not apply that to the engineering organization? So we figured that we wanted to create the most effective developer experience in the world. Uh, and for that, we did, obviously did a lot of research. So out of that came that um, um, you would want to have speed, uh, but you would not like to compromise safety and um, compliance and security. You want to scale, but you want to keep uh, the, the quality there. And you want um, um, the ability to tame your ever increasing chaotic uh, software ecosystem and tooling ecosystem and everything that, that is there. Um, because that chaos that will be there, um, that chaos is probably where the innovation happens. But you need to deal with it. So we went back to the drawing board and we figured uh, out a new portal, um, which was actually built as a platform. Because we needed to align a very autonomous culture, uh, we needed to bring together like 2,100 engineers, 20,000 software components. Uh, we needed to enable the collaboration and actually find a way to unlock our uh, potential that we had in our engineering works. So we started from scratch and um, this, uh, this platform had collaboration uh, at the heart. So it was rewritten in a stack that uh, people know or was a low lift to learn. Um, it was open to contribute to um, because everything in the platform, um, all the functionality that is there is all plugins. It is all plugin based. So that way the people who need certain functionality um, one of the examples that comes to mind there is uh, you have um, uh, data engineers and data engineers um, couldn't really um, work with the previous portal. They needed functionality in there. So with the plugin system, they were able to add the, the plugins that they needed. They were able to add self-service to uh, that portal. And that is really powerful if you can put uh, those parts in the hands of the engineers who have the knowledge domain, who are there to solve those uh, problems. Um, also uh, built in was collaboration. So the whole idea around the platform was to have that one spot where people could basically find anything they needed to do their job. And also focus on collaboration because our uh, code was open to anyone. It is just that you need to empower the people to actually do something with it. So that made, us, uh, made it able for us to scale the platform. So we have a small team, still have a small team uh, to maintain the core features. Um, we have platform teams who build and maintain the plugins uh, and teams that use the plugins and, uh, and maintain their software and uh, hopefully uh, bring back uh, feedback uh, uh, to the uh, pl plugin owners um, to um, improve on this uh, on this platform. So there's a, a few things that uh, that are uh, are important. So backstage is an interface. So it is not created to replace the tooling, but to aggregate uh, the tooling. Um, it is not a source of truth, but it is to um, get all those multiple single sources of truth that you all have, I'm pretty sure, and get them together in that, uh, in that one place. So that all people can have the same information, can access the same information consistently. Autonomy is at the heart. So backstage is meant to be built together. So it should not have a big central platform team. And the team who owns the plugin who creates the plugin, that's the team who understands the, not problem, the challenge. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. So, and the ownership, um, so yeah, you can collaborate with, uh, within your uh, company, you can have a really big um, uh, inner sourcing effort uh, going on. Uh, we also do that within Spotify for, for many of, uh, of the things that we have. Um, but there still should be one single team who's responsible for the metadata, who's the point of contact, um, because in the end of the day, uh, otherwise uh, things get uh, uh, probably messy. And that was a success. So 80% of the uh, contributions uh, to, to Backstage, they come from outside of the core team. 
This is also by far our most successful in a source effort that we have because of that. Over 150 plugins are contributed from over 100 squads. Um, and uh, still to today, um, that is, uh, it is a very successful platform. And it is ever expanding. But yeah, so these plugins, um, like I said, Backstage itself is also used to drive inner sourcing efforts within uh, Spotify. So let's take a look at a few of those uh, plugins that we have, which help us um, um, collaborate uh, and, uh, and do, a, do a better job at involving everyone. So this is the uh, skill exchange. It's uh, our internal marketplace and that enables collaboration, um, but you can also uh, start learning. You can share um, um, your, your knowledge uh, that you have. You can find mentorships, you can pair, you can join hackathons. Uh, we also have uh, things like hack weeks, which are very interesting because you get to collaborate on, uh, on something new, uh, something old or something blue. Um, and that, this is a re real great thing. It's, it's sort of the bread list uh, of, uh, of engineering. Um, you, if you need help, if you want to embed in another team, that's uh, actually um, promoted and supported by, uh, by this, uh, this plugin inside of Backstage. Um, another one is to collaborate on the best practices. So within Backstage, you can use software templates uh, to create, for instance, um, uh, your new uh, application. Um, it will basically uh, do everything that is there defined as a best practice. So it will uh, give you your infrastructure that you need. It will uh, arrange the observability. Um, and as you can imagine, within uh, such a company as ours, um, there's a lot of people involved in creating these, uh, these things and making sure that um, um, we have the best uh, developer experience and the lowest, uh, lowest friction. This helps really um, developers to deploy stuff and to understand stuff better and to feel more confident. Documentation. Yeah, actually, it's a bit sad that uh, I put it uh, in this order because I think that everything starts actually with documentation. Uh, because if everybody is able in the company to find the actual documentation, not search, but find what they need to know, then everybody is able to understand technology in the same way. Everybody is able to understand the same uh, language. Change is only happening when there's trust and the people driving change, they must be confident to some extent. It is important to all be able to access information. This is one of the core things in Backstage. It's called Tech Talks and well, um, there's a lot of plugins for, for uh, Tech Talks as well, where also people can collaborate on. It's a real, real great feature that we, uh, that we have. Because this is all integrated also in the various um, things that one might um, uh, use in Backstage. For instance, if you look up the information around microservice, there's just this tab, Docs, and you click it and you get the relevant documentation. If you search for documentation, it will not only find the documentation, but it will find everything that is related to the thing that you're searching for. Another important thing is when you talk about collaboration and being able to understand the ways of working and to really empower people to collaborate, one of the things that we have is golden paths. Um, it's something you might use at your company as well, maybe uh, with another name, uh, but it is um, basically a guidance to work through every step that you need to go through to deploy an application. For instance, if you're a backend engineer and you want to write a backend application, you go through the golden path, but you learn everything from setting up your local dev environment to uh, interacting with backstage to create your service to uh, creating, uh, for instance, a data pipeline, which you might know nothing about, but that is the power of backstage. You learn and you can use uh, the functionality that is offered to you uh, to, to spin up things that, uh, that you need. And at the end of that, uh, you will deploy an application. Um, and for, for this, we have golden states. And golden states is a way um, to, to define 
what actually are the requirements for the ideal version of, a, of an application or, a, a, for instance, a microservice. Um, we also have a plugin for that. So that shows you um, to what level you are on that, uh, on that golden state and what you need to do to improve. But yeah, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of learnings um, there. So let me, uh, let me go through that. Um, so from this project, we learned that uh, adoption, um, like in many things in life, is, uh, is key. It's an investment that you need to make. Um, accessible information drives the trust. It uh, drives the um, it, it 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 drives the confidence. It it empowers people. Unification um, of all the touch points that you might have that really lowers barriers, because if you work kind of in the same way as um, in in other knowledge domains or for other uh, um, maybe applications or systems that you have, then that really lowers the friction, it lowers the barrier. It is more inviting. If you have consistency for your core experience, like a CI CD, um, that really helps as well. Because you do not need to learn all new things. You can use the knowledge that you have. So having a consistent experience is super important. A marketplace, um, I've seen uh, some talks yesterday, uh, it, uh, it came up. Um, as well, um, that drives collaboration and it should be there to foster uh, this culture. But also, don't force, but incentivize behaviors. Now, I'm not talking about sending people a t-shirt, um, but it is more in the value that it provides. And yes, sure, you can send people a t-shirt. But if, if the incentive is a value for you as developer, like lower friction, or a better experience, then that's much more inviting. And that can be a real, um, a real um, motivator. And yes, um, what we've learned from Backstage is that it is an investment. But also, uh, not something you should over-engineer. If I think if we, we would have started working on Backstage with in mind what it is today, it probably wouldn't have worked. So now how can you leverage Backstage to supercharge your engineering organization? So Backstage is uh, open source um, a little over two and a half years ago. Um, it is an open platform for building developer portals and open in the true sense. It's donated to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and you can get your hands on it uh, today. Um, it is there with three core features, which is create, uh, software, using software templates, um, we've discussed that. Uh, managing all the software that you own, having the insights, having all the tooling available that you need to without replacing it, but giving you a low friction uh, overview, giving you the timely information that you need. Um, exploring, being enabled to find anything that you need, being enabled to collaborate, And yeah, if you look at the company level, uh, managing, you're growing or shrinking, which is also a very challenging organization. Managing the complexity of that growing software ecosystem, but not like by, by being, um, 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 by trying to hold back, you know? not, not by stepping on the brakes, uh, but letting it play out, but, but good in a, in a good way, you know, that you have the control there. And leveraging the power of open source, of the open source mentality, of the plugins that are available in open source. And you can also create your own plugins. So a plugin is basically an NPM package. Um, backstage is, if you look at it and zoom out a little bit, it's a React node and a TypeScript. Um, and yeah, you can start writing one uh, with one command, it will create um, a template for you uh, to build your plugin off. Also, there's plugins that, uh, that will be, be released by uh, Spotify. So the, the ones that we uh, were very successful with for uh, inner sourcing, uh, and there will be an event around that, and that will be in, um, in, uh, on December 15. 
Um, and there are some examples in there that you might recognize from this uh, presentation. And with that, I'm totally on time to also maybe answer a question if there's any. Um, if you want to learn more about Backstage, uh, more about um, the plugins that we use to drive our inner sourcing uh, capabilities, then you can scan this QR code. There's a getting started guide and there's all the links to the uh, relevant information.